see what happens here. Um, according to this, I am live. I am um, coming to you direct from Detroit, Michigan. So that's pretty exciting. Um, today uh, is Independence Day in the United States. So um, I don't imagine there will be too many people watching. But for those of you watching live, hello. Um, how are you? It's nice to see you. Um, I really appreciate you checking it out. Um, I, uh, I'm going to play some music. I'm going to talk about some songs. And uh, I'm going to try to make it stuff that um, still holds up if you weren't watching it live. So uh, we'll, we'll be listening to some full songs and some demos and uh, a lot of cover songs today. Mostly cover songs today, but I'll talk about a couple other things. Um, I hope everyone in the U.S. is having a good holiday. I hope everyone is staying safe in the big resurgence in the United States of the pandemic. Or, or you could argue it never went away, but uh, it definitely seems like it's, uh, it's, it's worse than ever here. Um, and to everyone else in the world, or nearly everyone else, especially Europe, congrats um, and Canada for getting it under control. Um, I guess we'll get it under control eventually when enough of us have had it, which is a depressing thought, but... That's how, that's how it's looking right now with the pandemic. Um, but anyway, please be staying safe to everyone who's listening. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, a song that is on my latest record. It is a slow one, but don't worry, I got lots of fast ones coming. Um, but that, we're going to start slow, and this song is called For Good. Um, and I want to play it because it's another one of those songs where... Uh, you know, it's fun to compare the demo version. I have a demo version of this that I had recorded. It's just a, it's less than a minute long, but um, it's fun to go, oh, could you hear the potential in that demo uh, for what the full song became? Um, so I, I never know which one is the right order, if I should play demo first or if I should play um, song first. I'm going to guess that playing the song first is the better way to go. And pardon my visual distraction here for a second while I am posting this link to um, Facebook and Twitter so that people know where to find it. Because, you know, I've been doing this on Facebook. Oh, I should mention that. Last week we got cut off at the end of the live stream because Facebook said I was violating copyrights. I suppose that could happen again here. Uh, I could get booted from YouTube for playing my own music. Um, because it doesn't know that I'm the copyright holder. It, you know, I think it assumes my distributor is the copyright holder and I'm violating myself. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, hopefully this is working. If you do uh, tune in and you're hearing this, um, please type something in the chat on YouTube uh, to let me know you can hear it. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to just assume it's working and keep going. Um, I hope. <laughs> I hope I pray. All right. Um, Without further ado, here's the song for good, and we'll follow that up um, with the demo version uh, for the fun of hearing the differences. Soon I'm gonna close my 
love to play you the original demo version of that that I had done probably two years before um, you know finishing out and recording that song. Um, it's always fun to hear those back to back. So um, let's listen to the original demo of For Good, which was just called Experiment 29, because um, I always do these 30 beat experiments before I do a record. This was 29th, one of the last experiments that I did. Um, and it just sounded a little something like this. pretty sincerely it reminds me i think you could throw it on like during a uh like the i don't know it reminds me a little bit of the love theme from breakfast club a little bit or uh, maybe not exactly but like stuff from it could be in a john hughes movie in a one of those long themes themes like maybe um i don't know uh while we're playing demos there's another one that i really like um i can see that there's hardly anybody watching today. I kind of expected that. I said that at the beginning of the show, um, it is a holiday here in uh, the U.S. and everybody is at barbecues and picnics and things like that. Hopefully staying safe, hopefully so socially distancing outside, but having a good time, I hope. Um, but I, I'm i not. Uh, I didn't have any place else to be, so I thought I'll live stream anyway. People can watch the recordings, and I really wanted to test out YouTube, so if there were any problems, if the audio is not working, less frustrating because there's not as many viewers who are going to be irritated with it. So um, I'm going to play a demo called Somewhere. And this was a song that I, you know, I started but did not finish um, back when I was doing Humans Know Safely Graves, which came out in uh, 2014. So the demo is probably well older than that, probably 2012. So it, it goes way back. Um, but I really, really like the sound of this. It's another one of those demos where when I go back and listen to it now, I'm, I can't figure out why I didn't um, release that song. So here, without further ado, is a song called uh, Somewhere. There's not much to it. It's short, but you'll get the idea. <laughs> sound of it i just think it's nice um so yeah it's got like a nice blend of like vocoder backing vocals and um simple drums and uh, i like the feeling that the, the pulsing synth makes so yeah why didn't i finish that one i, I must have thought it didn't fit the vibe of the rest of the album that's usually why something that's good gets cut um i wish i'd kind of finished it as a beat track but there's only so many hours in the day, I'm sure I was on to the next thing. Um, so, 
Now I'm going to move on to a chapter uh, that I was thinking about doing two weeks ago, but I'm going to do it now um, because two weeks ago is when I finished my latest cover song for uh, a band called Anything Box. Most uh, American synth pop fans know Anything Box. Um, most South American uh, synth pop fans know Anything Box. They are not as big uh, from uh, my understanding in ne necessarily in Europe or or anything like that, but um, but because they're an American synth pop band, and that is the, and that can be harder for uh, American synth pop band synth pop bands to hit in Europe sometimes. Um, but uh, they had a big hit in the '80s um, called "Living in Oblivion." Um, big, relatively speaking, it wasn't a number one hit, but it was a popular song. People played on the radio, and um, I personally found their record when I was uh, just starting college. Just starting college, it's one of the first records I bought on my college campus. And uh, in the, at the very beginning of the 90s. So I guess I'm saying 80s, but really they're almost a 90s synth pop band because they, you know, they were at the end of that synth wave, right? They came out right before grunge did, um, which is unfortunate timing, more fortunate than my timing where I didn't come out with anything until well after grunge had hit and synth pop was, was gone. But um, nevertheless, it probably uh, shortened their wide popularity, I, I imagine, because... Um, people were kind of over synth pop while they were making it. Um, but anyway, I've liked the band, and I have a long history with them. Um, when I was first starting out, uh, I was I had like sent in for their fan club just for the heck of it, and then I ended up getting looped in with the people who ran that fan club and being on, uh, being you know mentioned in their newsletter and things like that, which helped me gain some traction as a synth pop artist a little bit, and. Um, you know, over the years, we would we would cross paths from time to time, not in any big ways, but you know, we uh, my song would be on the same compilation as an Anything Box song, or my uh, or I would do a live show I I, I had opened for them, or uh, you know, like we both played the college college music journal synth pop showcase in New York. Um, I remember that one in the kind of in the late nineties or early two thousand somewhere around there. Um, I remember playing shortly before they played and, and hanging out and backstage a little bit with, uh, with the band. And even before that, um, I remember meeting them, or at least Danya from Anything Box, actually. I didn't meet Claude uh, in Dallas uh, because she was there um, hanging out with us when we were doing the synth pop showcase there. So I, I've crossed paths with them a number of times, and, um, and it's been good and helpful uh, to me to, to be associated with them because they had an established fan base. And people who like their music have a tendency to like mine, which is not always hand in hand. Um, so uh, that's been a good thing. Um, I'll tell more of the story of, of my relationship with Anything Box as we go along. But first, I'm going to play you something new. I did a cover of their song for a compilation that's coming up. It's, a, it's an Anything Box tribute that's going to come out. We don't have an exact date, but soon, next month, month and a half, it's going to come out. Uh, a bunch of, you know... Um, you know, smaller synth pop bands, although a few bigger ones, are, uh, bigger, better known, like Food Pop, um, I don't know if you're familiar with them, Ariana, right, but like uh, bands you've heard of that you know that you like um, are doing covers of Anything Box songs, and the whole thing is it's the, for charity, and the charity is Claude from Anything Box. He had, uh, he had a major surgery, and uh, the bills are nasty from that sort of thing, so the, the proceeds from the compilation will go to help him instead of good. So this song will be on there. This is not mastered yet. This is pretty much in demo form, but it's in pretty good demo form because I, I think I'm making it. So um, it's not going to be as robust and full sounding as a regular Cognizant song, but you'll get the idea. And this is a cover of the song Blue Little Rose. So if you know the original, then um, you'll be able to uh, sing along. And if you don't, hopefully you like the song. Um, and I'll, I'll play a little bit more of my history with Anything Box after that. We'll, we're going to stay on there for... 10 or 15 minutes, and I'll tell a little more of the story about uh, my relationship with them. But uh, here's the new one, Blue Little Rose.
seems like it's loud enough. And, and, how about now? How about now? How about now? That seems better, right? For some reason, it keeps trying to turn itself down, and I don't know why. Without me doing anything, without me touching anything, it, it turns itself down. But hopefully this will stay in place, and I will stay loud enough for you guys to hear. I apologize for it not being loud enough before. Um, so um, that was, oh, now it's getting too loud. I can see overloading. That was um, Anything Box, uh, my cover of Blue Little Rose um, by that band. Um, so I did that again for anybody who couldn't hear when it was too quiet as a uh, part of a tribute compilation that's going to be coming out in four to six weeks-ish. Uh, you know, all, all bands covering Anything Box songs, synth pop bands. Um, so it should be really cool. Um, hopefully you liked that. Um, so I have two more that I'm going to play uh, by this band, and I'll tell you a little bit more about them. So I um, had a little trouble with this last one, this next one I'm going to play. I, there were a couple years ago now, I was... Um, there was a contest to do a remix of the next Anything Box song that was going to come out called Fast Forward. Um, and, um, you know, I, I don't know how many bands submitted, but I'm sure a bunch. And I got contacted by Claude because, as I mentioned before, we kind of know each other, um, you know, from different things that we've bumped into each other at over the years and that kind of thing. And he said, hey, you know, because I had submitted my remix, hey, I know I haven't made formal decisions yet, but I can tell you right now that your mix is one of the mixes I'm going to choose. He was going to choose a few um, to put on his single. Um, so I'm going to send over the paperwork and, um, and you know, please, I need you to sign up for this distribution service that I use. So, and this is, this is a nice thing, so that you can get royalties off of, off of the sale as well as me. He would get royalties from his songwriting, I would get royalties from my my performance on the remix, which is nice, right? Because usually when you submit a remix to someone, they own it, um, and it's for them to, to use. And um, if you are a paid remixer, you get paid once for doing that remix, but then they collect all royalties on that. They own it after that. It's, it's not yours anymore. Um, so it was a nice gesture. Um, unfortunately, I had to pay to sign up for that distribution service. And then um, despite us artists asking what happened that never none of the remixes from that contest were even the ones that he selected or at least reached out to people about ever were released and i don't think anybody knows why uh we were just never answered so that was a little frustrating um claude is a very nice guy um i'm sure there's a reason but it, it was a it was frustrating he, he has a lot of stuff going on in his life so i'm you know you know, I'm, I'm not mad about it, but it was it was a little frustrating because you put a lot of time into making the remix, and I guess there was no guarantee that he was going to pick it up. It was a contest after all, but then I had been told, and I paid to sign up for that service, and then it wasn't released, and I don't know. Um, but the I guess the good news for you is that I still have that remix. I don't know if it's particularly good, actually. Listening to it now, maybe I wouldn't have released it either. Um, it, it could use a little redoing. I think the kick drum's too heavy. I think... There's parts that aren't right, but um, it's worth playing. Um, if So this is a remix of their song, Fast Forward. If you know the song, Fast Forward, then you'll be able to judge it against that. If you don't, it's just a song. Uh, I mean, all I used all I used of his um, were the vocals, and then I programmed everything else. So let's take a listen to that. This is Fast Forward, uh, an Anything Box song that I remixed but was never released. Doesn't matter. 
Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, I think I fixed it. I think I fixed it. I did. Hooray! Hooray for fixed. I cannot figure out what's going on. It literally keeps turning the audio off by itself. I can see it drop the audio and I have to reset everything. I'm so sorry. What a glitchy live stream this has been. I uh, am so appreciative that you guys are hanging in there with me. It was quiet at first and uh, now my audio, my mic completely dropped out. I'll try to keep an eye on it and uh, chase it down every time there's a glitch like that. Um, but at least we're back for now. Um, okay, so uh, I, I know you heard most of Fast Forward. The music seemed to work fine. So at least that, at least that much worked. The music's what matters, right? Um, okay, so hi, hi, Pierre. Thank you. Hi, everybody else. Um, um, so, all right. Um, I was fin let me finish my anything box story and then we'll move on to something else. So, uh, so frustration with that song never being remixed or, or never being released rather. Um, and, uh, then, um, on the latest thing that I, that cover song that I played earlier, um, that I did of Blue Little Rose, right as I was finishing that, I was, I was reading some of his posts, uh, some of Claude's posts, uh, Claude of Anything Box on Facebook, and I started to get pretty frustrated because, uh, he was, um, if you ask him, he'll say he wasn't, but, um, he was stoking some conspiracy theories, theories about, um, COVID-19 and, you know, asking the deep questions when, you know, it, it's like, you know, when the science is obvious on a lot of this stuff. And that was really, uh, irritating me. And, um, I, uh, it almost made me walk away from the project. Um, he, he backed away from some of that stuff and, and said that he was, you know, just speculating and he, you know, he wears a mask in public and all that. It's like, all right. But that, that kind of put me off. But at the end of the day, um, he is, he's, he's always been a, a relatively good dude to me with the exception of, uh, of disappearing on that fast forward project. And, uh, everybody deserves to uh, have their health taken care of. It's, it's not his fault that the American healthcare system is, is BS, uh, and, and he needs cash to pay for important, important operations. So, um, so, you know, I finished the project of course and, and submitted it. So it'll still come out. I think one of you was asking about, uh, are we still doing a, group uh tribute song um we are i don't know how much i'm supposed to say about it but everybody or nearly everybody on the compilation is all participating in a track together in a way so uh so that'll be a part of it um and that's all i'll say about that in case it's a secret um one more anything box thing and then we'll move on way back in 1999 or so right around there i did a cover uh um for uh, a single that I'd released back then for the song Self Involved. It's still on that single. You can still buy this song. Um, a cover of A Moment's Shifting, which is also by Anything Box, also from the same record that the song Blue Little Rose is from. I liked that record of theirs. Uh, so I'm going to play that. It's a much slower, much different version. Their version is a dancey, uh, peppy song. Mine is not. Mine, mine is optimistic, but it's not, it's not dancey. Um, we'll play some of that, and then we're going to move off of Anything Box onto something completely different. Um, and But we are sticking with cover songs for the rest of the thing, unless you guys request something else. You tuned in on Independence Day. You've stuck with me through audio glitches. If you have requests, I'm going to try to fulfill them. Thank you so much for watching. Um, but to wrap it up, here is a moment's shifting uh, by Anything Box covered by me.
Sleepy Ballad, pretty different take on that song if you uh, know the original, um, which I'm sure um, a lot of you don't, seeing all the different places that you are writing from, um, Barcelona and Peru. Um, well, hopefully a few of you at least know the originals, or those probably have uh, less meaning as cover songs. Um, this next one is another one that it, actually everything I'm doing is pretty American today because it's... Um, it's uh, Independence Day, it's a big American holiday, so hopefully you guys will know some of these. Uh, I don't know how many uh, were major global hits and how many weren't. The next song that I'm going to play was the one I was going to finish the show with last time before the plug was pulled by Facebook. I used to do Facebook live streams, I moved over to YouTube to see if this goes better, for copyright violation, which was funny because I played nothing but my own music uh, on the last show, and they busted me for playing my own music. Um, and I know that it's uh, a technicality because the company that distributes my music was probably the one that they have, they have the copyright noted for, and that's me. So they're pulling the plug on me for me kind of silly and I can't really fight them Facebook has no way to do that so over to YouTube we go um, but uh, this next song um, would be you know is a cover all these are covers so if they want to get angry about them they can um, this is a song called maniac uh, and uh, it's from the movie flash dance so if you saw flash dance you probably know this song um, I did this under my real name under my given name Mark Nicholas it was on my Perversions release back in 2008. Um, so check that out. Um, this and the next song I'm going to play are both on Perversions. And they're both covers. Um, and I love this. One of my favorite covers I've ever done. And I was going to wrap up the show with it last week, but uh, Facebook pulled the plug before I could push play. So enjoy. If YouTube pulls the plug, you'll know what happened. I don't think they will. I've already been playing songs that they probably could have pulled the plug about, all those Anything Box songs. Um, but you never know. Uh, hopefully this works out. Here's Maniac.
is the audio going to work? Yes, okay. Yeah. Didn't turn itself down this time. Who can say why it's doing that? Um, all right, so that was Maniac, again, from Perversions, under the name Mark Nicholas, not Cosmicity. Uh, cover of the song from Flashdance, the one and only 80s classic. Um, somebody has requested, who was it that requested this? Dennis uh, is requesting that I sing a piece of the song Awake. Um, I think I'll do that, but I'm going to have to sing along with the recording. I don't have an instrumental handy, but hopefully that'll play. Uh, and hopefully I can remember the words. I think I can, at least most of them. Um, so I will do that in a second. I'll wrap up my this little Mark Nicholas chapter uh, and, and songs from this um, CD really quickly, though, because this is very short and I've got it all queued up. So I'm going to quickly play a cover of the... Uh, God, i got to remember the original artist. Dr. Dre. Was it Dre and Snoop? Shoot, I'm not going to remember. But it's definitely Dr. Dre's part that I rap. Uh, California Love is the Tupac. It was Dre and Tupac. Uh, and nobody expected me to cover anything from the genre of American hip-hop and rap. Um, I am actually not the biggest hip-hop and rap fan, but I always kind of liked the song California Love. And I do love California. And I heard that song for the first time um, while I was in California, one of the first times I ever went. Um, so... I always had a fondness for that song. So I thought, what the heck? It was easy. I, I used to do it live. It would come out of the song Green, and I would just keep on singing um, this cover for a minute or two just for, to make people laugh, just to get the smile, the surprise of a synth-pop band doing that song. So uh, let me play that for you guys really quick, and then I'm going to try to do this awake request uh, the best that I can. All right. California love. <laughs> Was California Love, um, covered by me, originally by Trey and Tupac. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was just one of those things where it was funny. Um, it was different. It was not a cover people were expecting me to do. I love doing that. I think that's actually going to be my next project. It might be the very next thing that I do on a live stream is go through the cover songs that I was working on um last year at the end of last year some of you saw them on facebook um i was covering 80s and 90s songs and i'm going to try to pick 
four for an EP, I think, and release that. So we're gonna we're gonna have people vote and decide which ones are the strongest, and I will finish those songs um, and put them out. At least that's my hope. That's my plan. Um, so uh, okay, I'm gonna try this awake thing and play one more song, and we'll close it up for the day. Thank you guys for listening. Um, can I sing along to awake uh, worth a damn today? We're gonna we're gonna find out. We're gonna put a little reverb on. A little re ooh, reverb. I hear it. Uh, that should help, I think, if there's a little reverb like that. And I'm gonna try to sing along with the original. So we'll see how this goes. Hang in there, everybody. layer of vocals. You could argue it was a duet with myself from 1995 and myself from 2020. So 25 years later, singing with 25 years ago, not bad. 
I could hear the difference in my voice. You, probably harder because you guys are hearing a full blend in this room. I'm pretty much just hearing myself and a little bit of a feed from the headphones. And uh, yeah, I don't know. My, it's a different quality to my voice. I could still hit the notes, uh, but I definitely sound a little different than I did 25 years ago. So if I ever uh, tried to remake the track, um, I don't... I still have the vocals on tape somewhere, but I don't have any way of getting them off of tape. So if I ever do a remake, I'll probably re-sing it and you'll hear the difference. Um, so thank you for that request. I'm gonna take this reverb off here. Um, all right, and um, we're gonna wrap it up with one last song, uh, one last cover song, since that's been the theme, one last cover song of American bands and music. Um, this was a song by the Pointer Sisters. I don't know how popular this song was, outside of the United States. Um, I think that their other songs were popular. Neutron Dance was probably a hit outside of the United States because it was in uh, a movie, it was in Beverly Hills Cop. And I think that um, they had that song Jump and that was used, I remember that being used in like pageants, right? Like Miss America type pageants, Miss Universe pageants for a long time whenever uh, they'd have a like a sequence. I don't know why that sticks with me, but like every year they'd use the song Jump by Pointer Sisters whenever there was like a cutaway sequence. Um, so I know people have heard of the Pointer Sisters, but the other song from that record that was a hit in the United States, um, maybe not as big as those two, but still a hit, was called Automatic. And I loved it. It had such a synthy, techy feel. And this was, I was a really little kid when that was a hit. I was probably in the third or fourth grade, maybe I'm 10 or 11 years old. Um, and uh, it's just really starting to go nuts for synthesizers. And I heard automatic and it's got all, it's got these bendy, synthy, really um, artificial robotic sounds. And I loved that. I, I used to say that um, synth sounds sounded like rubber bands. So much so that I remember as a kid constructing these, like I was like, I'm gonna make my own because I didn't have a synthesizer. And I put like a piece of wood and two nails at different lengths, you know, on the piece of wood. And I stretched out rubber bands to try to make my own rubber bandy instrument that sounded like synthesizer sounds. That's for real. I did that. Um, but uh, anyway, automatic was part of that. And uh, so it's always stuck with me as an influence. And I wanted to cover it when I did my best of collection way back in 2004. I put out a collection of my best songs up to that point. It's far from complete now. I've released so much since then, but uh, at the time it was a good collection. And um, this was the new track that I put on the end in addition to the DVD movie, uh, sort of. The movie, you know, is a stretch, but it's a an almost movie length uh, assembly of clips uh, of, you know, me in recording studios and, and showing me over the years as I was doing things. Um, that was part of uh, Definitive as well. So if you can find a, a CD copy of that to, uh, still today out there, you'll find that it has a DVD inside that has that. And if you can't find it, I recently posted that on YouTube. I also forgot to mention earlier that the song Maniac that I covered, there is a music video from long ago of that also here on YouTube. Um, it is very stupid um, and very silly and very poor quality, and I recommend it because you'll laugh. Um, okay, uh, what did people say? I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, people were singing along, um, saying thank you from Peru. You are welcome. Um, I would love to come to Peru sometime. Hopefully that will happen. Obviously travel's tricky right now, um, but hopefully someday in the future. Um, my girlfriend Patty sent little hearts. She was happy to see me singing. Thank you for listening. Um, and uh, all right, I think that's it. I'm gonna play this last song, Automatic, and then I will be out. Thank you for listening. Thank you for bearing with me on a new platform with audio glitches and all of that painful stuff. Uh, it's, a, it's always a learning experience when you're moving technology around. Uh, but I think I've got the hang of it now, so hopefully it'll be smooth uh, in two weeks when I'm back with the next one. And again, you don't want to miss it in two weeks because we're going to be picking live, um, or at least you'll be influencing live. I don't know if we'll pick everything, but you'll be influencing which songs are on my next uh, EP. Because I'll, I'll, I'll do little, I'm going to be, I'll sing little bits of them and we'll decide which ones are the strongest. Um, all right, without any more blabbing, Automatic by the Pointer Sisters, covered by me.